Man, every time I get in front of these lights, man, to get in a different mode. What you mean? Game time? I turn to a beast. <laughs> I turn to a monster. Bro, activated takeover. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. You know what it is, though? What is it? It's this hair, bro. I'm telling you, you've been acting different. It's a di- hair? You've been acting different. Don't since say you got I've been twists. acting different. You've been acting different, y'all. But I've been feeling different. Not, not my point. I can tell. I've been feeling <laughs> real different, man. You've been moving real different, bro. Talking, you know, a little... I mean, like you, like you, Hemothy or something like that. You feel me? The twists give me enhancements. No, but it really does feel like that after you. I don't know. Maybe this is just a guy thing, but after you get a fresh cut of any sort, <laughs> you get your hair redone. You know, I don't know if it's the same for women, but when you ever you, for men you, after you hop out the bar, I got at the barber shop today. Yo, I feel like I'm. You know what I mean? I'm. You feel I can like do that thing. You I'm, can do whatever. Yeah, it's like I'm on the top of the world. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, but you be feeling real different, though. Yeah. It's the way you walk, you know. It's just a part. It's the way you, you know what I mean? You start to you carry pro- yourself. The, yeah, your posture. You, you, know see, you start sitting up. <laughs> <day. laughs> you start driving your car lean back like this. Nah, yeah. bro. You feel like you go talk to anybody. That's what I'm saying. Any it really is different. Y'all let us know if it's a universal thing. Oh, man. That's hilarious. But no. Nah. You ready to get into it? No, let's go. I'm going to start it for this one. All right, yo, what's up? It's your boy, D. Starks. Starks Artist. And you are now tuned in to the Just Different Podcast, where we talk everything faith, life, and culture. We're back. We are. Once again. Again. Another week. Man, we get we getting straight to it. So we got a lot of announcements and things and news, a honestly. A lot of news. To get into. But the first thing I wanted to say is this past week, mm-hmm. where, of course, I'm sure as all you all saw and got, depending on what you use, but... The Spotify raps oh, yeah. came out. Crazy. Everybody's Spotify raps, like top five music, podcasts, and mm-hmm. things like that. And one thing we want to do up front, and we mentioned it and when we did our episode on Thanksgiving, but we did it at the end. And I just wanted to express like how much we appreciate oh, yes. each and every one of you all. And I think sometimes we get on here and we say it. I don't want to ever like overdo it to devalue what it means, mm-hmm. but we really love y'all. We love like you. the support that we've seen since we started this podcast has been legitimately unreal. It's crazy. Like, and we're just like fortunate. We're blessed and full mm-hmm. of gratitude. Honestly, it's been like my mood lately that we have like a people. You feel me? Like a tribe. Most I remember I was just thinking about the fact that you know one time we went live and I just saw a people. They was they was clowning you because of the Arby's joint. Yeah. <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> and it was the, in my head, it clicked like, yo, like, we got like inside jokes. You know what you I mean? Got, yo, like, people even like, you know, it's different when that. you got the inside right, jokes. Right, exactly. In yeah, bro. And that was just so dope to me. Put the biggest smile on my face. Yeah. But we just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Much. We're very appreciative of Love. everyone that's ever followed, liked, mm-hmm. left a review, shared anything. Like, it, it and it's, you know, it, it means the world. It's crazy. And it's, and it's up for 2023. It really too. is. Like, y'all have no idea, man. It's up for <laughs> Y'all don't know, man. But uh, I wanted, so I was going to wait because we are in pretty close to hitting 1 million, like, total downloads to, like, give the stats and whatnot. But, like, these really blew my mind. Yeah. And, like, uh, it's really more of, like, another celebration of, like, us, but, like, really what God has done yeah. and, the, like, support, like, appreciation for you all. So in our Spotify rap, one of the uh, categories of things that came back was that the podcast was the top 1% most shared globally. Yeah. Top one. Globally, bro. That's the whole, I, if y'all don't know, that's the whole world. Like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> but that was absolutely insane to me because I, I wouldn't have ever imagined that would be the case. And so all. essentially what all that means is like you all, like y'all listen to podcasts, you're sharing it to yeah. like the group message, mm-hmm. right? The youth group, your friend, like whoever, you know what I mean? Or just like sharing links back Y'all and been forth. spreading the love. That's what that the means. The love for real. Um, and that's always encouraging too. Anytime that we get a message in the DM about somebody who exactly. like it's li- like literally is like, um, like yo, like my youth group listens and like, yo, they yeah. may have like been inspired or like got motivation for a particular topic y'all talked about. Like, you know what I mean? For that Wednesday mm-hmm. or that Sunday, whenever you meet and that like, we it's just crazy. appreciate y'all. Then the other one was like, you're, we're the uh, top one percent most followed podcast, like yeah. globally as well. Praise and God. we also were heard in eleven, wait, one hundred and twelve countries worldwide. Man. So obviously, what we've, you know, what I mean, what 
what what's happened this year mm-hmm. right has you know expanded beyond what we thought like literally crossing borders um so shout out to our international audience shout out saying, UK, canada australia south africa you, you, you know, know you know it's good um and everywhere else where yeah. you know y'all sh- support and tune in um and i share that just to really like show what i mean really what god has done yeah. and what he's put his hand on and what like what's been able to grow um from from what from what this platform is and there's all it's always love from y'all so we had to add that in there thank y'all most definitely got any words for the people man i'm at a loss for him (laughs) (laughs) but no i just wanted to shout out front because like we we really love y'all and that's just really a testament Mm -hmm. to like what god's doing and you know what you all have like poured into us like letting us invest into your lives because i know that's not like an easy thing or anything that we take lightly either so with all that being said uh this is I guess not unfortunately, in some ways, but not going to be one of the last episodes we do. Yeah. For twenty twenty two for the for this entire year. So the last two weeks of December, we're gonna be, you know, taking some rest, taking mm-hmm. our own advice, a little right. sabbatical, <laughs> time off just to breathe, uh, get rested for get ready for the well, new year. Yeah, getting ready for like what we have coming in twenty twenty three. Um so next week will be like the last episode we drop. We're gonna yeah. be, you know, probably be a longer episode which i'm excited about Most we're gonna definitely. be you know doing the same thing we did last year going through like our biggest lessons mm-hmm. a lot of reflection and i have some other topics that we're gonna really talk on yeah but with that being said the news is right when we come back from this break talk to you gonna let them know bro new you let them know man you, you let them know they want to they want to hear from you all man. right so look bro <laughs> when we come back starting next year in january mm-hmm. and extending to the entire year of 2023 yeah we're gonna be dropping two episodes a week. Two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Two week. We're going two a week. <laughs> we're going two episodes a week. Uh when we're changing the schedule. So instead of posting on Thursday, we're doing Wednesday and Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna remind, you know, everyone of this like next week for the last episode and also like on our social platforms. But we're going two episodes a week, which I'm super excited two about. Week, man. We already have like some guests lined up. Yep. We're traveling this weekend, the rest of the month to get people on. You're gonna see a lot more like collaboration. Yeah. And, like, People that like we love, we respect, like you all want to hear from. Um, we do as well to get on our platform and speak. And so I'm super, super. Yeah, like, we we've been talking about it for a long time. Yes, we just felt it was a perfect time to do it now. No, 100. So we... And like, there's you know a lot of other like segments and things that we're yeah. going to be adding to the show that we want to like you know just just expand. Right, and it's mm-hmm. that time for us. Like we're growing and. Uh, uh, and that's a byproduct of that. The show was growing as well. Exactly. And I hope y'all, you know what I mean, rock with us in this process. But that's the news for right now. We'll have some more little updates next week. So stay tuned for that. But let's get into it. Let's go. Let's go ahead and tap in. What we get um, into. So kind of going off of the Spotify raps and them coming back. Whenever I was seeing those come in through the DM and things like that, one thing that it did for me, I was like overwhelmed with like gratitude. But. I also was honestly f- was uh, confronted with a lot of insecurity okay. that I had, mm. right? And because for me personally, I for what for you know, what I mean, it's not coincidental. But for me, one of the biggest things that I struggle with is feeling as if like my words fall on deaf ears, mm. and the things that I say aren't necessarily important or significant. And like, there's some like. Something reinforced by the enemy is like he's always throwing this lie that like my platform, my purpose, or what I, or who I am. He tries to like devalue that, right? Yeah. And I try to, and I get in these cycles of thinking that like, yo, what I'm doing isn't that significant, isn't that like important, and I just diminish its value. Yeah, and you know, so like seeing all of those really like it shocked me so much because sometimes I can just um, downplay what God is doing in me and who he's made me to be. Mm -hmm. And so that was, I was really had to confront, confront myself with that and be real with the fact that's something I necessarily haven't addressed as much as I should have, that I need to get into. And, you know, it's no coincidence because I think that sometimes your greatest insecurity is connected to your highest call Mm -hmm. to what God wants to do in your life. And so he's always going to reinforce these lies and these thoughts of like inadequacy and you not being, and you making you feel as if you're not enough mm-hmm. and getting us in these uh these thought patterns and perspective for ourselves that like yo like maybe it's not me mm. you feel what i'm saying like like that we're we're not intelligent enough we're not brave enough we're not courageous enough we're not um 
maybe not even like attractive enough yeah. right or we're not deserving of love or like we're not qualified enough or whatever it may whatever. be these thoughts that like are um always coming to us and trying to get us in cycles of like not really a, a stumbling block of not stepping into what god really has for us exactly and so that was something that i kept thinking about and i had to like really like confront myself with and so i was just like yo it's, it's definitely the time to mm -hmm. to speak on that and i felt like it would just it'd be so timely going to 2023 because yep. like you have to have like a proper view of self in order to really do what god's called you to exactly yeah and that's why i'm even excited for this like this little two-week break that we're about to take because i feel like you know the, the self-reflection over the year and like what you've learned and stuff you need to confront i think all oh, that's really important but something that i've noticed is that my biggest insecurity is attached to satan's biggest fear um, oh, like all my life so like if his biggest fear is that like i'll become like a vessel for god and like i'll be fully used like to the fullest extent by god like nothing left on the table consequently like he's going to try to plant a seed of insecurity that i can't be used by god at all you know what i mean like that that's going to be his main point of attack oh that's going to be his main point of attack you know what i mean um and i've noticed i do that to myself all the time it's like it's like a it's like a self-sabotage it's like I'm telling myself I'm not good enough to be used by God when God's like, well, I'm good enough to use you. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's really all that matters. But that that's something that I've noticed. It's like there's a direct correlation between what his what Satan's fear is and like insecurities and things he's trying to plant in my in my brain and like thoughts and torments. So yeah. To ultimately pull you away from purpose. Exactly. Yeah. And whenever I was even looking at uh like just the definition of insecurity and looking it up uh, I found that there was two and the primary one that we know it as and the context in which we're talking about it right now is uncertainty or anxiety about oneself right. uh, or lack of confidence. Right. But the second one really got me thinking. And the second one said the state of being open to danger or threat, lack of protection. Mm. And that stood out to me because I think that when you're insecure, you're not protected. Because you're like you're more liable to give in to the deception of the enemy and and like what or how he wants to define you, mm. right? And it's because we mentioned it before, like when you don't know who you are, you let anyone define mm. it for you. Exactly. exactly. And so if God isn't speaking to that part of your identity, then you'll always be moved at the sound of any opinion that is. Mm. And so it's one of those things to where, like I like I was kind of like talking on briefly, is the fact that it can be that that stumbling block. To like where you where where you need to go yeah. and like where God has you, mm -hmm. um, because that is one of like the enemy's chief like you know just objectives in terms of like how he attacks our identity, our self esteem, and mm -hmm. view of self is through these insecurities. Yeah, most definitely. Um, and something else that I feel like I see a lot that I I want to talk about with insecurity specifically is I feel like and you let me know if you've seen the same thing. I feel like I see a lot of people settling for like the insecurities that they have. You know what I mean? Like. I think the reason why is, is you can get so used to it. Like when you've been living with it for so long, you can develop like different coping mechanisms, me coping mechanisms and like live, live around your insecurity so much to the point where it just becomes like a part of who you are. You know what I mean? And something I feel like God has been teaching me is like, you don't have to settle. And that goes for like every area of life. And I feel like with this specific, like you don't have to settle for, those insecurities that you're feeling about the way that you look about um, whatever the case may be, like any insecurity, like the way that you sound, not feeling good enough. You don't have to settle for feeling with feeling those thoughts. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, we serve a guy like Peter was walking through the, through the, um, on the sidewalk, people was touching the shadow and were healed. You know what I mean? So it's like, if, if that's a reality and we serve a God that can make that happen, why can't he, deal with our insecurities you know what i mean i think we belittle them so much and even it maybe it's just because we be, we've become used to them that we don't see them as as problems or as as big as they really are you know what i mean but even if you do see that's a little thing like god can handle that like if god if god can do that why can't he touch that area of your life or, or that part of your life that you're dealing with you know what i mean so that's something something else i've noticed like you don't you don't have to settle you don't have to live with that yeah, and I, I, I didn't know if I, I don't want to get into this much because it's kind of like one of my lessons I was going to mention next week. But oh, okay. sometimes I think that 
with that, we can like have these thoughts or moments of feeling like inadequate, and we take that on as like our complete identity, right? Of like who like of who we are, the state that we're in, mm-hmm. and one of the things that I feel like we mentioned a while ago in our episode called Cycles, but it's the fact that like these thoughts like may come, but they don't have like the authority to stay, exactly, and. That's what you like. Also, have to realize is the fact that okay, like yo, it's not necessarily that you can be confident and still have a moment of right. feeling insecure, mm-hmm. right? And the fact that you may feel insecure doesn't mean that you have lost your sense of self, right? right? And so I think sometimes these thoughts can su- come, and we then automatically think, oh snap, like I've lost it, right? The grip of my identity or who I think I am and mm-hmm. God is completely gone. And that's not the case because these thoughts are going to come, right? Just because of like. One, the attacks of the enemy, you know, it's just being like, you know, in this flesh shoot yeah. of thoughts that are going to come, like just travel through our minds. But it's the fact that when they do come understanding and believing that we have the power through God, that they don't have like the authority to stay. Exactly. It's because going back to what I was saying that I, I kind of forgot to mention and the fact that like when you're insecure, you're not protected. The danger of that is not that like, um, like I said, you have that moment of insecurity is that when you sit on it, when you allow it to linger, because mm-hmm. you open your, you open the door for think for like self pity yeah right self doubt that then come that turns into complete discouragement mm-hmm. and the faith that you have in yourself and what God can do to you exactly so it's not necessarily just that one thought that leaves you vulnerable but when this one thought comes and you continue to give in to that lie mm-hmm. and accept it as the truth instead of like the reality that God wants you to live in and so I think that was that that's a good point but mm-hmm. well, understanding that it can come but doesn't have the authority to stay and casting those like casting those down yeah exactly and um. I find a lot of peace, I guess, or courage in the fact uh in just the life of Jesus and how he handled like his self worth. Um, and what I mean by that is like one of the main things I feel like that plays into insecurities, at least for me in my personal experience, is just like rejection, like words from others, like feeling like I wasn't accepted by people that like had a huge part to play into like certain insecurities or you know lack of self-worth in my own life but even when you look at the life of Jesus like he came down and was completely rejected by the very same people that he was called to you know what I mean but he was still so firm in like who he was going back to your point like about when you're rooted in God like no one else's words really hold weight you know so he was so rooted in who he was that their rejection didn't allow him to succumb to it you know what i mean i'm sure he had thoughts of like dang like questioning like i came down here for y'all like y'all you know what i mean but he didn't allow the thoughts to stay and he allowed to choose like who he was and remain rooted in that you know what i mean so that's always something i go to as well when it comes to this conversation is like not giving into the rejection and like staying rooted in who i am and not allowing that to create insecurities in in my mind you know yeah that like and the rejection is just a part of like where we're putting like the most weight, which we always like to talk about, like the the what holds more value, significance, and priority of like who, like you know what I mean, whose words mm. matter more, whose words. And one of the points that I had down, I want to talk about is like it's very that I mentioned. It's like it's very important that you begin to see yourself the way that God does, mm. because a part of this conversation that I'm currently walking out and realizing is I didn't necessarily have the most accurate view of who I was because I wasn't looking at it through God's lens. Right. And I, yeah. and I, and I really, I would, I didn't, not only did I didn't look at it through his lens, but maybe I, I did and didn't really believe it. Okay. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Like I, I, like, okay, I see it's been confirmation of, I see what you called me to. I mm. see that what you're affirming in me with who you've called me. But I haven't grasped it for myself, mm. right? I, you know, I did see it, but I didn't believe in its totality. Right. And there was something that I found that I wanted to read, and it said that you can read all the self-help books you like and even attend counseling, but until you get a revelation of God's love for you, total freedom will remain difficult to find. Some mm. people know God loves them and wants them free, but they hold on to guilt and feelings of unworthiness. They work overtime to be enough and acceptable to God through works, a list of do's and don'ts they think will make them holy enough and it comes down to the fact you know what i mean like we get in these cycles sometimes like i mentioned of maybe trying to like work for our self-worth or like for what god has for us because we may have not come to the point to really believe 
what he said about us yeah. and our and the revelation that we have on our relationship with him. Um, and like you mentioned that I like, it's like, yo, you have to realize like God doesn't just want you free, like from cycles of sin, whether mm-hmm. that be like, 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 you know, lust or greed or whatever, but he also wants to break the chains of like insecurities yes. and like your view of yourself and like this, the, like confronting your own self-esteem mm-hmm. and in Galatians 3.22, it says, we receive God's promise of freedom by believing in Jesus Christ, right? So the promise of freedom, right, of course, takes part on our end, right, proactiveness, mm-hmm. but it has to become first through the belief yeah. that it can even happen. Mm-hmm. And like we like we talk about all the time, Matthew 9.22, according to your faith, let it be un- done unto you. And so a part of this conversation is just continually like getting to a point of like, yo, God, like help my unbelief yeah. of where I'm at and how you see me to really not only like see it like through scripture, mm. through confirmation, through these different places of where you want me, but so I can really see it like for myself. Give me a revelation of your love. Is that It says something about that, like only a revelation of God's love will, will help that. I, I like that. I was listening mm. to a podcast recently and... It, it reminded me of a conversation we were having with, with someone at one point about like the practicality of God. And I was just thinking back on that and about how sometimes we, we don't think to ask for certain things when it's, 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 we over, um, we overcomplicate certain things. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, I, I had asked myself like, when was the last time I asked God to give me like a revelation of him, like, like a new fresh, like revelation of him, of his love, of whatever the case may be. And I like, I, couldn't remember the last time like I asked for that you know what I mean so it's like even being intentional about that like God like give me a revelation of your love you know when I'm when I'm feeling insecure when I'm feeling these thoughts like really just praying that because sometimes we I don't know what it is like I I don't get it we just forget it like we can ask (laughs) and that we'll receive (laughs) yeah give me a revelation give me a revelation of your love and he'll move on that you know what I mean jeez yeah give me a revelation of your love that's so that that's the one I think, and I was just thinking about that earlier too because I mean we just got off the phone, and had a really great conversation mm-hmm. and that was going through my mind as well of, um. Like because we were we were talking about really, the idea of like okay, what when do I know, that what's coming to me or what's in front of me what I'm being uh offered yeah. is from god or isn't right um and what those scenarios look like of like okay like if it's not necessarily against like what i know god's standards are should i still fall into it right and i get i kept coming back to the idea of like yo when you're presented with these options and decisions there will always be confirmation like that 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 follows um, exactly whenever you whenever you're trying to um make like make that choice and you know, it, and I kept saying that and saying that, and I'm like, yo, it, like, I almost felt like, yo, it wasn't enough, but it really do be that, it really is that simple. For real. So just tying it back <laughs> to your point, give me a revelation of your love, it's like, yo, like, just simply asking, exactly, like petitioning God, coming to the throne with that, and then walking in faith that it will be something that's answered. Exactly. Because, like, I mean, it. It comes down to that sometimes we just overlook it. It do it do be feeling like that though. Like it can't be this easy, you know? What yeah, I mean? no, fact, like, for a fact, there has sure. to be more. I like I like how you mentioned yeah. that, but but um, something that I've noticed um, and this is recently, like literally while I was writing the notes for this podcast, like this is something that God had revealed to me about myself, right? So the, this whole conversation is very timely for me. So something that I wrote down is there's a difference between boasting in your weakness and low self worth. So sometimes you can have insecurities, you can have doubts, you can have fears, but you're covering that up with, okay, I'm boasting in my weakness, though. And there, there's a clear difference, though, because we know Paul talked about that, boasting your weakness, where, where I'm weak, you're strong. But I think what we're doing is we're we're boasting in the weakness, but not allowing God to feel the weakness. You know what I mean? And mm. it's something, something that he revealed to me is like, so I walk throughout my life with this mindset of, I can't do this, but at least I have God. And he re- like, it's crazy. Like literally right before this, like even sometimes when I'm uh, having certain conversations or sometimes before we record an EP, I, I feel like, 
like I get anxious. I'm like, I can't, I can't really do this, but at least I have God. You know what I mean? But something he revealed to me is you have to change your mindset from that to I can do this because I have God. And it's, it's a totally different mindset, right? Just that small tweak. Cause it's like, when you change it to, I can do this because I have God, that's when you're allowing him to feel the weakness instead of just allowing it to sit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cause sometimes we, we just don't want to address it. We, we want to, we want to skip past the fears and insecurity. So we let them sit and it's like, okay, I'm sitting with this now, God do your thing or, or whatever the case may be. And it's like, no, you still have to, I think a part of allowing him to sit in the weakness is, is being intentional about facing it. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? Or just giving it to him, giving it to him. Yeah. Instead of just allowing it to sit there. Cause sometimes I feel like that's what I do is like, I don't want to address it. I don't want to deal with it. So I just allow it to sit there instead of like giving it to him. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, that's really what I mean. But yeah. Cause I think sometimes we can walk through life handicapped mm. and get so used to, that this this cast we put on ourselves that we think this is how life is meant to be most definitely and we've been operating with this cast on right and we've been pretty proficient we've been pretty effective Mm -hmm. and so we don't think that there's there's an issue right but there's still like still right Mm -hmm. we've almost like misdiagnosed i was just i was just um uh, listening to something about that, like some NBA player was like misdiagnosed by this team, right? So he was mm-hmm. playing. Uh, I think he had some type of like ligament. I don't know something like in his foot. Yeah. That um, something was going on, right? But he couldn't. He couldn't necessarily like feel it. There was a little pain here and there, right? He may make some movements, like you know what I mean, like maybe like throughout like the week or something like that. Yeah. But nothing that was like um, completely stopping him from like performing okay right but he still wasn't necessarily at 100 percent, right but like he'd go out right he do he you know i mean he'd do his thing like, yeah. you know I me mean, 20 points or whatever right and um eventually like they came back realized that yo that was a mixed diagnosis of that like yo there's actually the what you got going on is like actually quite severe Dang. right and if you would have kept playing on this particular like injury mm. at some point it could have ended your career right yeah. so i think sometimes we go through life without life like that with our insecurities mm. of like okay we tuck them down yeah we try not to address them take the time to actually heal right and we're going through we're going through like our classes right we're going through whatever god's yeah. called us to like in our in our workplace in mm-hmm. our fit in our field of study and we're killing it yeah you know what i'm saying we're still doing we're doing our thing here and there it. here and there we may have a few breakdowns yeah. like dang like this ain't really it i don't know where i'm at like who am i mm. right but for the most part i'm still i'm brushing it off i'm mm. fighting through Right. Yeah. And not realizing that, yo, keep going down this path, down this repetitive cycle mm-hmm. of not allowing the gate, giving these to God. Yeah. Right. It can end your career. It can end it. It can end your career. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I say that because I definitely felt the same way. And that's why it was so like timely for me to even come to realize this when I was going through like the Spotify routes, like I mentioned. Yeah. It's because it's like, yo, like I felt like because it takes it takes time to heal. Yeah. And sometimes you can get in modes to where like you intentionally know there's work to be done in this healing process and just try to put it off. Try to put it off. Yeah. Right. Because this is like, oh, I don't I don't like I consciously like, yo, I know I need to face this and this. Yeah. But I don't got time right now. Especially when like you were talking about when things externally are still going well. Fact. You know what I'm saying? When you feel thi- like there's no need to because you don't see any red flags mm-hmm. on the on the other side. Like you mm-hmm. still playing. I'm still playing on. You feel me? The swallow, the swallow ankle. I'm cool. Yeah. I'm still dropping thirty a night. We be waiting for things to blow up to actually address it. I'm like, that's right. just not how. It- exactly. <laughs> we should address it right now. But going going back to your point, that's um why it's so so important to uh that that mindset shift and that and ultimately like giving these things. <laughs> To God, because it is one of those things where you can kind of just like brush over, yeah. Um, and you just it becomes normalized, like what your regular routine and how you see yourself. And it walk felt life. so normal, and and that was like a big indicator for me that something needed to change. It was like, it was like fear no longer felt foreign. Like when I was facing certain things, like insecurity felt natural. It, it was like you know what I mean. And then once I noticed that, that was my indicator. Like, okay, like, yeah, something, something's off. Like, I need to, you know, address some things or whatever the case may be. But yeah, um, opening your eyes to like the things that you're, you're trying to look past. You know what I mean? Even that's a prayer that I ask is like, God revealed in me the things that I've like forgotten about or put to the side. But yeah, no, yeah, and this reminds me of 
um, when we did When Life is Good, because I kind of talked about, I mentioned at the beginning, because you just said like fear like wasn't foreign to you anymore. Yeah. That's a part of my testimony too. Um, because I was kind of talking about how you don't like deal with particular sin for so long and like you've been so accustomed to this being a part of your like regular routine that you wake up one day and like you feel weird actually being in freedom and that's the same way with me it's like yo I was in like self-doubt for so long of like yo like no it ain't really that that major not that big deal I'm straight I ain't I ain't really all that and so when I stepped into actually like you know trying to be confident for the first time Mm -hmm. it felt weird like dang it almost felt like I was being arrogant because mm. I had no language for it once right, before. Right. And I was still trying to get comfortable in like what that looked like and what it meant. It almost felt weird when I go up at some type of speaking engagement, some youth group or get in front of a mic and I didn't like I wasn't questioning myself. Mm. Right. And you and thought something was wrong because you weren't. Questioning I thought yourself. something was wrong because it's just like, yo, that self doubt of yep. me trying to put myself down, mm. that negative self talk. Even when I was in school, like going for a test, like, man, it ain't going to be that good. Like, yeah. it's whatever. Like. It, it it all you know what I mean? It, it just yeah. created that <laughs> that habit and normalcy in me mm. that I didn't even like sometimes even want confidence because I was so familiar with the with what doubt looked like. Yeah, no, that that takes me to my next point. I it's like, hmm. It, because you're talking about how you had a lot of self doubt and then once yeah. you got put in situations where you you got the the opportunity to speak you got you know what i'm saying when you got the thing you felt you were undeserving of or you felt you know what i'm saying that you were always doubting for so long and you finally got it it still felt as if like it wasn't right you know what i mean mm-hmm. like if it, it felt like something was off and i think that's what we do sometimes like when we have something we f- we feel we're undeserving of we're like looking for hmm what's the word i'm looking for we think it'll be solved when we get that thing right we think we think the validation will come when we receive the thing that we're doubting. When we receive the thing, like for example, like I've seen instances where um, people felt like they were undeserving of love, so they were looking for a validation of like, okay, all I need, I just need someone to come along and love me, and then that that'll solve the problem. But it comes, but they they still feel like un, undeserving of it. They feel they still feel like it it doesn't feel right. It 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 feels very foreign. You know what I mean? So I think so. Like they they. Like they feel like as if they're undeserving of love, right? Yeah, and, it, and it's it's right in front of them, and they still don't. They still don't. Yeah, they still don't accept it exactly. Because I think it's 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 about getting to the root. I think it's that that's the conversation. It's about getting to the root of it. It's less about like receiving that thing and getting rid of like the reason why you you think you don't deserve it. If that makes sense, you know what I mean? It's like it's about getting to the root because there's a reason why you're insecure about that thing, and and receiving that love isn't always necessarily going to solve it. You know. I always used to think, I think sometimes people are fueled by, there's like a, mm, like a counterfeit esteem Mm. that's fueled by what people have said about you. Right. Instead of like what you're saying about yourself. And so for me personally, like, and I wanted to make sure my heart was right before I started the podcast because I knew that I would fall into a trap of, man, I wasn't as secure as I was in myself and felt like, yo, whenever I started to actually walk out my greatness and people Mm. would speak that to me or validate or affirm that to me, then that's when it would come. And that's not how it happens. And sometimes people build their entire life based upon how other people have perceived them to feel their confidence instead of like getting it for themselves and not understanding that that is a a very avoid venture most definitely. It's only going to leave you empty because it's something that you have to get to the root of, like you said. Yeah. The why is really important because it can be from like some type of like, whether that be like experience, something mm-hmm. that you didn't get when you were younger or things that you just adopting yourself from like your environments that you have to attack head on and that's when you really have it for yourself. Exactly. Um, so I think that's so important. Really get into um, the core, the, the core. source. Exactly. The source of what that is and not allowing like anything else to like try and feel it for you like i said with the example of love like okay i don't think i deserve it so i'm waiting for someone to like give it to me yeah or like show that to me and then that 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 feels that part of me for a bit until i realize oh snap i have i i got it and i still feel empty man so like i feels, got it and like man i'm still forcing it i got it and i'm still in the mirror like man i'm not enough like dang 
Yeah, I got the I got the six figure job. I got into the Ivy League school. I got it. I made the dean's list. I but did. I still don't think I'm smart enough. Mm. I still don't believe that I'm capable. I still don't think I'm adequate right. for the position that I'm in. It's because it was always an issue of like your own eyes and not like what other things like mm. try to perceive you as. Exactly. So yeah. No, you got anything? You you got anything else in that for hmm. the people? Hmm. Nah, that that was that was that was pretty much that was pretty much it. I said I said everything. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I need What's your you find you find a remark? So you gonna leave me? Yeah, yeah. I got I got some. I, I want to leave the people off. Yeah. With. So I think the I'm gonna just I'm gonna leave them off with like a main takeaway for me, and this is something I'm gonna be very intentional about, like taking to my own life, and it's about how like um there's a difference between boasting in your weakness and low self-esteem you know and, and not living life from the mindset of i can't do this but i have god but from the mindset of i can do this because i have him right and just shifting that mindset right yeah so just just allowing his his strength to to sit where where your weaknesses are you know what i mean and and really giving that to him like and being intentional about that so yeah Give me a revelation of your love. That what you said? Yeah. That's it. Give me a revelation of your love, especially going into next year. Yeah. Whatever that's going to look like for you personally and what God's calling you to. Give me a revelation of your love and a, and a new perspective, not only perspective, but belief in how you see me. Mm. Cause that's all that really matters. Real talk. So yeah, look, yo, we appreciate y'all. Mm-hmm. It's always love. We coming back next week. Last episode of the year. Be ready. So make sure you stay tapped in, and stay you, stay real, and stay humble. We'll catch y'all next week. Much love. Yeah, I forgot you supposed to do the real part. That wasn't tripping. <laughs>